In this example, we're told we have fluid entering a horizontal circular cross-section sudden contraction nozzle, so that's this thing here. So you can see it comes in in the cylinder, and then it suddenly contracts into a smaller diameter cylinder. And we're told that uh, the velocity is uniformly distributed and equal to V1 here, so it's just a nice uniform flow here, and it'll we'll assume a uniform flow going out. The gauge pressure at 1 is P1, and the fluid exits into the atmosphere here. The, we're asked to find the force in the bolts required to hold the contraction in place. So you can see there's some bolts here that connect this step down portion to the original pipe. And lastly, we're told to neglect gravitational effects and assume that the fluid is invisible. So this will be a linear momentum problem. And the reason I, I think that way is because we're trying to find a force in the bolts. And I know force is related to linear momentum. And what's happening here is you've got some linear momentum coming in. You know, uh, we have a velocity v1, and because of conservation of mass, it's going to change the velocity here to v2, and uh, that'll also cause a change in the linear momentum, which will result in a force, and that force will be the force that this section applies to the fluid. So we're going to apply linear momentum here. So let's uh, first of all draw a control volume that we'll use to apply linear momentum, and We'll also put a coordinate system. Let me put the coordinate system first. Let's just call this the x direction. And that's going to be fixed in place so we don't have to worry about any acceleration effects. As far as the control volume, I'll choose control volume that cuts across the incoming stream, V1, at right angles. And then I'll have it cut across the outgoing stream at right angles uh, right there. And then we'll just go along the surface of the pipe. And then <clears throat> let me focus on the bolts for a second. We're trying to find the force in the bolts, so I'm going to have my control bomb actually cut through the bolts so that I have the force that one half of the bolt exerts on the other half. Um, that, that will actually be acting on the, the control bomb. So for example, uh, the force that this left part of the bolt exerts on this part of the bolt will actually be exerted on the control volume. So I'll just call the, all of these bolt forces just force bolts. So again, the idea here is if I just zoom in on that bolt, what's happening is I'm sort of essentially cutting it in half like that, and my control volume is just cutting right through here so that the force that one part of the bolt exerts on the other part, I'm, I'm drawing like that. So this is kind of what my control volume looks like. So I'm going to have it cut across the bolts like that and then just come around that way. I just wanted to make sure that I have the force that the bolts uh, exert on the control volume uh, in there because I'm trying to find the force in the bolts, so I need it to interact with my control volume in some way. All right, <clears throat> we said that we're going to apply the linear momentum equation in the x direction. Oops. So let's write that out. So we'll write out our linear momentum equation. Again, it's always a good idea to start with your basic equation. Write it out in its full form and then simplify from there. So here's our linear momentum equation in the x direction. The first term is the time rate of change of x linear momentum. That's going to be zero because we're going to assume that this is a steady problem. That uh, the situation here with the flow coming in from the left, going out to the right, that it's not changing with time. It's the same kind of picture uh, regardless of the time here. Uh, let's do body forces in the x direction. That's going to be zero because we're told to neglect gravity. That's just given in the problem statement. <clears throat> excuse me, surface forces in the x direction. Let's put, let's take care of that. So the surface forces, of course we have the bolts, right? That, that's what we're trying to solve for, so we'll put that in there. And those are acting, we've, we've uh, drawn them acting in the positive x direction, right? So this is in the positive x direction. If, if it turns out to be negative, then of course the direction of the force will be in the opposite direction. By the way, the way I've drawn it here, 
the the force in the bolts I've drawn actually is being in, in compression. If if it was going the other way, then it would be um, in tension. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the other surface forces. We're told that the flow is inviscid, so we don't have to worry about any shear stresses. But we're also told that we have a, a gauge pressure at the inlet here, P1. So we'll have a pressure force acting at the inlet. So let's put that in. That'll act in the positive x direction. So that'll be P1 times D1 squared over 4. So that's pressure times the area. So it's this pressure. It's acting inward on the surface. So that's the positive x direction. And then the area there is circular based on that diameter d1. Now all on the outside here that's all open to the atmosphere so that has zero gauge pressure so we don't have to worry about that. So there's no no pressure force to include on the outside. So just to emphasize this is a gauge pressure I'm going to put a sub g down here on the pressure just to indicate that that's a gauge pressure. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what about here in the stream as it's discharging from the, from the pipe? This is what we call a, a free jet. In a free jet, the pressure everywhere in the jet is atmospheric pressure. One way to think about this is if these streamlines are horizontal here, you can imagine that uh, the, the pressure is going to be uniform across here because if the pressure on the outside was higher than the pressure on the inside of the stream, then you'd imagine that, that it would actually deflect inward, right? So if, 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 if the stream was, if the pressure on the outside, P atmosphere, was larger than the pressure inside the jet, then it would have to deflect inward because you're pressing inward on the stream. Similarly, if the jet had a higher pressure than the atmospheric pressure, then it would deflect outward, right? Um, actually, I probably didn't draw this all that well. Let me, let me redraw this. So if the pressure on the, in the atmosphere was larger than the pressure in the jet, then it would be deflected inward. If the pressure in the jet was larger than the pressure in the atmosphere, it would be deflecting outward, It'd be expanding. But in this free jet, it's just coming out horizontally, so the pressure will be uniform across here, and it'll be just atmospheric pressure. So this is atmospheric pressure as well, or zero gauge pressure. Okay, so far so good. The last thing we need to evaluate is the momentum flux in and out. So we only have flow coming in here and flow going out there. Let's worry about the inlet first. The x velocity there will be v1 in the positive x direction. So there's v1 in the positive x direction. So that's this term I'll highlight in yellow right here. Then we have the mass flow rate term. So that'll be density times the relative velocity. Relative velocity will just be V1 minus the control surface velocity, but the control surface velocity is zero. So that's just going to be V1 in the I hat direction. And then we dot product it with the area on that surface. And that area will be a negative pi d1 squared over 4 i hat. Made this a little too close here. Let me fix that. So the area there is minus pi d1 squared i hat. The minus comes because the outward pointing normal vector on the surface is to the left. Remember, it's pointing out of the control volume and it's pointing to the left. So that's in the minus i x direction. And then the area is pi d1 squared over 4. So this term I'll highlight in green just to signify that it's the mass flow rate part of the term. So that's what's happening on the left side. Then the only other place where we have mass crossing the control surface is on the right side. I don't have a velocity drawn here. Let me just call it v2. I don't know what that velocity is. We'll, we'll have to figure it out. So on the right-hand side, the velocity there is v2. That's also in the positive x direction. So uh, because it's you know it's clearly in the positive x direction there. So this is our ux term here, the yellow term, and then the mass flow rate term will be the density times the velocity there. Dot product with the area there, which will be a pi d2 squared over 4, and that's in the positive i hat direction. The normal vector on this area 
the n hat, you can see is pointing in the positive x direction. So that's why this is a positive area. And I'll highlight this one in green since it's also the mass flow rate term right here. Okay, so we have all of the terms we need for the linear momentum equation. So we can go ahead and rearrange that. Uh, so let's see, we'll have a minus rho v1 squared pi d1 squared over 4 from this, from this term. And then we have plus rho v2 squared pi d2 squared over 4 coming from this term. And then that's all equal to f bolts plus p1g pi d1 squared over 4. That's coming from the right-hand side. So that's what we have from linear momentum. And we're trying to find the force in the bolts in terms of the upstream conditions and the geometry. So p1g, presumably we know it's an upstream condition. The geometry d1 and d2 we know. v1, presumably we know because it's upstream. The only thing we don't know actually is v2. So we need to find a way to figure out what V2 is. And the way we'll find that is just from conservation of mass applied to the same control volume. Because we know that whatever mass comes in here has to be the same mass that comes out here in a steady flow. And the mass flow rate coming in will be related to V1 and the mass flow rate going out will be related to V2. So we'll apply conservation of mass to the same control volume. It's very common to apply conservation of mass in linear momentum equation problems. So there's conservation of mass. This is the time rate of change of mass inside the control volume. That's going to be zero because it's a steady flow. This is the mass flow rate term, but we already evaluated that here at the inlet and the outlet. So let me just recopy that. So at the inlet, it will be a minus rho v1 pi d1 squared over 4. Then at the outlet, it'll be a positive rho v2 squared pi d2 squared over 4. So we can simplify that equation. You'll see that a rho and pi over 4 will divide out. And what we'll get is v2 is equal to v1. Oops, you know what? I made a mistake here. This should not be squared v2 squared. It's just v2. So v2 is equal to v1 times d1 over d2 squared. So that's what we get from conservation of mass. And we can substitute that in right there into linear momentum. So again, very common to use conservation of mass and linear momentum equation problems to help give us another equation to kind of take care of some unknown variables. All right, so now that we have that, we can substitute in and rearrange and solve for f bolts. So if I do that, I'll just give you the final answer. I won't go through all the algebra involved because that's not very interesting. So assuming I did all my algebra correctly, this is what we get for the force in the bolts. All right. So again, um, I've drawn the force in the bolts showing that the bolts are, I assume they were in compression. Uh, if this comes out to be a positive number, you know, if you, if you were given some numbers in the problem and you plug them in and this came out to be positive, then yeah, the bolts would be in compression. If it came out to be negative, then the direction of the arrow would be in the opposite direction and the bolts would be in tension. Okay, so hopefully this problem seems relatively straightforward. It's just a straightforward application of the linear momentum equation in the x-direction and conservation of mass. Probably the trickiest thing in this whole problem, in my opinion, is knowing how to draw the control volume correctly such that you get the force in the bolts. So the way I did it here was I just cut through the bolts so I have the force that one part of the bolt exerts on the other part. That's probably the trickiest part. All right, we'll go ahead and end it there.